Rocks are evidence. They're evidence of past events in the history of the Earth. They're like clues to a mystery. And the science of geology is all about examining those clues and trying to solve the mystery. Now, if we look closely, we can see that this rock is made up of individual grains of sand. So this must originally have been sediment, loose sand that has been turned into sedimentary rock. And look at these fossils. These are bivalves, clams. And over here is a gastropod, a marine snail. And there's traces of burrows. We call these trace fossils. You can see a nice one right there, but all kinds of indications in the sandstone of, of burrowing and churning. So the same animals that produce these shells would have been digging through the sand and getting whatever organic material they could out of it. And these look, look similar to the same sort of animals that live in Puget Sound today. Bainbridge Island wasn't an island. Everything here was underwater. To be turned into stone, the sand that was deposited here must have been buried thousands of feet. The glue that holds the sand grains together, in this case, is silica cement. Now, silica cement forms when the grains are buried, compressed together, and under great pressure, the grain material actually dissolves right at the contacts and then reprecipitates around the edges of the grains. And that's what cements them together into stone. It only happens under great pressure, which means great depth. So this sand was deposited, more sand and other kinds of sediment was deposited on top of it, and that kept going on and on until it was down thousands of feet, several thousand feet, and that's where it would be turned into stone. At some point, it was then raised all the way back up and eroded off onto a surface that's flat enough to walk on. <laughs> 